Hello friends, welcome back to Chini World. Today I am going to explain you a comedy, fantasy film from 2015. Titled The Brand New Testament. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. Many people believe God exists, but what they don't know is that he lives in an apartment. In Brussels with his wife and his daughter E.A., who he doesn't treat very well, even before the creation of the world, God was already bored, so he created Brussels and filled it with animals. But it didn't work, animals didn't do anything interesting. So then he created the first man in his image, who wandered around the city until he met the first woman and got busy with her. To get civilization started. Nowadays, EA lives with him, but she isn't allowed to go outside. She's been stuck in that apartment for 10 years. There's no way in or out. She isn't allowed into God's office and it's forbidden to watch anything but sports on TV. God's wife is soft in the head, and never complains about anything, she spends her days. Embroidering flowers and looking at her baseball card collection, which consists of 18 cards. She also keeps putting a fourth plate on the table when they dine because she hopes their son will come back, although God doesn't think he will. EA can do the same tricks her brother did. But God always scolds her for it, probably because he's jealous since he can't do them too. God's power to manipulate humanity is in a computer in his office. He's a miserable man. Who has never loved his wife or has ever been able to do anything with his hands. So to distract himself from a trashy life, he's created humanity as toys he could watch suffer. And struggle. By causing lots of catastrophes, he offers a lot of misery and a little happiness to give people false hope. For years now, he's been writing laws of universal pain in the rear, like bread always falling with the jam side down and the line you aren't on will always move faster. One afternoon, God accidentally leaves the office door open, so EA sneaks inside and takes a look at the computer, getting extremely shocked at all the cruelty her father has caused. Later at dinner, she calls him out for it, which makes him furious and gets him to whip her with his belt. After years of both emotional and physical abuse, that's the day EA finally decides to do something good for humanity, but not without making God suffer first. So the next day, after getting her bag ready, she turns to the figurine in her room that represents her brother JC. Calling his name is enough for him to wake up, so she asks him for advice on how to proceed. JC tells her to get some apostles, but he tried 12, like a hockey team, and it got messy. So, instead she should get 6, so between her and his apostles they get 18, their mother's favorite number because it's a baseball team. Choosing apostles is just a matter of her getting a feeling, so she can choose six people from God's files and then simply impress them with a little miracle. She should also get a brand new testament written, but since EA doesn't want people talking about her, JC tells her to make it about the apostles themselves. He also reminds her God is nothing without his computer. Finally, to escape, she can use the washing machine JC has hacked. Then EA gets her plan rolling she takes advantage of God falling asleep on the couch after drinking. Too much to steal his key and get into his office. There, she takes six random humanity cards from his file cabinet before using the computer to send a text message to every person on the planet. Telling them the date of their death. Afterward, she locks the computer, says goodbye to JC. And goes to the washing machine, climbing inside to find a very long tunnel that will take her. Outside, as she crawls through the tunnel, the world reacts to the dates in different ways. The news is already discussing if it's real or not, but they can't deny there have been way. Too many coincidences of people dying on time already. A woman that only has two minutes to leave begins taking care of every possible hazard in her apartment, but ends up with a cupboard falling on top of her. A janitorial technician becomes famous for being the longest-lived man. Having 102 years left to live, a young man starts doing dangerous things on purpose, like jumping off a window, because he knows it won't kill him. A nurse gets upset, because she'll live less than the elderly man she's been taking care of all this time. Many people don't even show up at work anymore, and wars have been abandoned. A mother that has way less time than her slow son doesn't want him to be alone and tries to kill him with a pillow. But he doesn't die because it isn't his time yet. People in social networks are recording themselves. Doing that thing they've always wanted to do and never dared to before. Back at the apartment. God wakes up and finds out what happened because even the sports channel is replacing the usual. Programming with special news flashes about the current situation. Getting furious when. He realizes he's missing his key and EA has locked his office. He grabs an axe and destroys the door. Only to find out he can't use the computer anymore. But he can smell EA's scent, so he starts. Looking for her around the house demanding for her to reboot his computer and even destroying her bedroom door with his axe too, which allows him to follow her scent to the washing machine. Speaking of the tunnel, EA finally reaches its end, which is inside another washing machine at a laundromat. Once she leaves the building, she is amazed by all the things she sees and hears because it's her first time outside. It starts raining and she loves the feeling of it. She also enjoys the taste of a burger she finds in the trash, although it makes her throw up. A hobo named Victor finds her puking and tells her it was the fish burger that caused it because they make them out of whales. EA asks him if he can write and when he says yes, she assigns him as her scribe. And asks him to take him to the addresses on the Apostles files, but he refuses to get involved. This doesn't stop EA from following him around trying to convince him, and when she eventually 
falls asleep, he ends up carrying her, which makes EA wish he had been her dad. EA explains to Victor. Some stuff like the fact Earth is paradise, which he doesn't believe because that's supposed to come. After death. But EA tells him that's not the case, there's nothing after death. Meanwhile. God decides he'll have to leave the apartment to find EA. When his wife tells him it may be. Dangerous for him since he never was out there, he gets furious and starts yelling at her, expressing. His frustration over having lost his control of humanity. They used to behave because their future was uncertain, but now they have no fear and can choose to do whatever they want with their lives. If she gathers followers like JC, she could end up telling everyone how not to be miserable, and he can't allow that. The wife stays silent in her fear, so after yelling at her for being stupid, God enters the tunnel in the washing machine. Victor takes EA to see her first apostle, Orly, who after learning she has 11 years left to live, changed nothing about her life and continued. As usual, Orly lives alone, which is strange for a woman so beautiful, most men want her. And most women are jealous of her. But she lives in a constant sad state because when she was a little girl, her arm was ripped off by a subway car, so now she wears a prosthetic. EA asks her to talk about herself so Victor can write it down for the brand new testament. So Orly tells her an anecdote of the time when she was approached by a hobo. She had thought he would rob her or ask for money, but instead, he simply said life is like a skating rink. A lot of people fall. Orly cries as she tells them how that little it of philosophy got stuck in her head and she remembers it every time she looks at herself in the mirror. After asking about her age and her mother's, EA gathers Orly's ears in a little jar because she can't cry. What she can do is hear people's music, so she puts her ear against Orly and tells her hers is Handel, a Baroque composer, and promises her to send her a good dream at night. Later that day, Orly dreams of finding her lost hand dancing on her kitchen table and getting to touch it again. While walking towards their next location, EA asks Victor if he knows his death date. But he doesn't have a phone. Their second apostle, Jean-Claude, isn't home. When he was young, he had an adventurer spirit, but then reality hit him and he had to work to survive, so he ended up having a boring office job at a big corporation and getting stuck in a depressing routine without a family. After learning he has 12 years left to leave, he threw his phone and briefcase in the trash. Then sat on a bench and decided to never move again. That's where EA and Victor find him. And after discussing the differences between fish and birds and people dying of old age, EA tells him his music is Ramo, another Baroque musician. Since she can talk to animals, she tells him that the bird he's been watching likes him, and when he asks why it never leaves the park, the bird says it could ask the same about him. This greatly shocks him. So Jean-Claude finally gets up and begins following the bird around. In the meantime, God finally reaches the laundromat, but only manages to get out of the machine after it washes him. There's an old lady there that gets scared when she sees him and throws pepper spray at his face. So he runs outside, where he's suddenly hit by the rain. When he tries to grab a burger from the trash can, a group of hooligans stops him, saying that's not his to eat and beating him up for it. God ends up in the hospital, where he pushes away and insults the doctor for touching his wounds and not giving him morphine. Then he takes a kid's slice of bread with jam, so the mother hits him with her umbrella for it. The third apostle on the list is Mark, who has 83 days left to live and is addicted to adult entertainment. He doesn't think about his parents often, and when he does, he only remembers the caravan they used to live in. His most important childhood memory is a beautiful girl that he saw on the beach and wouldn't leave his mind for two years afterward. Then other girls started appearing in his life and he got a crush on all of them, but he never was successful in getting any dates. He tried learning to talk to women by watching some online videos. But he only came off as a creep. When he learned about his death date, he decided to take out all his money from the bank and use it on women first. He paid for an escort, which gave him the best experience of his life, and now he's spending every night visiting adult shows until he runs out of money. After asking about his family too and wondering why things aren't free, EA tells him. His music is Purcell, also a Baroque musician. She also tells him he has a nice voice and he should make money with it, so he ends up working as a voice actor for adult films. The actress working with him turns out to be Xenia, the girl from the beach. They find a connection while chatting about literature and go back together to his apartment, where they fall asleep holding hands. Back at God's place, the wife finds some peace when she finally gets to turn off the TV, but she is shocked to notice the faces of the new apostles are appearing on a copy of The Last Supper. Meanwhile, God enters a church that does charity work and ends up getting into a fight with some hobos when he tries to cut in line. The priest takes him away and gives him some food while reminding him he should love his neighbor as God requested, but God gets angry because he never said that, JC did because he went against his father's hateful wishes to prove who he is. God tells the priest his name and begins pointing out all the bad things that happened in his life, laughing and reminding him he was the cause. This makes the priest angry and causes him to start beating him up as the statue of JC suddenly smiles at them. The fourth apostle is Francois, who has 25 years left to live and calls himself an assassin. The day the death dates went out, he bought a rifle to shoot people with. If it wasn't their assigned date, nothing would happen. But if they did die, then it wouldn't be his fault because it was all pre-written. He's been 
Obsessed with death since he was a kid he loved funerals, although he was never sad or cried. And he loved killing bugs and his cousin's pets. He got married and had a kid, and he felt his job in life insurance held no meaning. E.A. and Victor find him in the park, and after asking him his reason to shoot people, she tells him his music is Schubert, a classical composer. Then she asks him to shoot the woman that is about to pass by, who turns out to be Orly. The bullet gets stuck in her prosthetic, but since Franzos and Victor don't know about it, they think it's a miracle, and so Franzos begins following her around. He gets to brush his hand against hers in the elevator, not realizing it's fake, but never dares to speak to her. When he looks at himself in the mirror later, he tries to deny he's in love, but only makes him smash the mirror in anger. After ignoring his family for the night, Franzos visits Orly again, giving her some flowers with his number in the elevator as he declares his love for her. Orly doesn't answer, but she does take the flowers home with her. As Jean-Claude continues to follow his bird around the world, E.A. visits the fifth apostle, Martin, who has five years left. She used to be a romantic when she was young, but she ended up marrying a boring man that gave her a monotonous routine and looked relieved when he heard she would only live for five years of his 39. After learning about her death date, she hired an escort, but the experience wasn't very good and he ended up stealing her money from her purse. E.A. tells her music matches a circus, so they visit one, and there Martin gets to make a connection with a gorilla, which is the most beautiful thing that has ever happened to her and makes her cry. After telling her the gorilla says he likes her, E.A. collects her tears. Martin buys the gorilla from the circus master and takes him home, where E.A. sleeps on the couch. While Victor sleeps outside, he needs to see the moon before sleeping to remind himself he isn't in jail for something he didn't do anymore. The gorilla is allowed to break things around the house and Martin ends up kissing him. Meanwhile, Orly calls Franzos and invites him over. She shows him the bullet scar on the prosthetic and when she takes it off, he kisses it. A gesture that deeply touches her. The now couple ends up spending the night together. The next day, God tries to return to his apartment, but all the washing machines are blocked. He begins searching for EA again and finds her near the river, so he goes after her to get her to reboot his computer. EA simply escapes by walking on water, and Victor gets to do the same by holding her hand. When God tries it however, he sinks. A group of men save him and take him to church, where the priest makes them drop him on the same mattress as a bunch of illegal Uzbek immigrants. Jean-Claude keeps on following his bird and its flock, and he begins moving his hands to direct the flock's movements in a beautiful dance. The last apostle is Willie, who has 54 days left. He had always been sickly and even got surgery once, so when he learned about his date, he decided to become a girl. After telling him his music is Charles Drenet, a jazz musician, and giving him a dream about a singing fish the two of them begin hanging out together, easily making a connection because they're the same age. With the other apostles' help, E.A. gives Willie a great last week of life. It is during that we call so that Orly tells Franzos to stop killing, that Martine spends the night with the gorilla and lets him scare her husband away, that Mark and Xenia spend the night together properly for the first time, and that Jean-Claude reaches the North Pole, where the flock forms an arrow to guide him to a local woman. On the last day of the week, God is taken to Uzbekistan with the other immigrants while E.A. and the apostles take Willie to the beach so he can die at sea. Meanwhile, God's wife is happy to see. The apostles are finally 18 like a baseball team, and since it seems God won't be coming home, she allows herself to be happy. She puts on some music then dances and sings to it while cleaning, even daring to go to God's office to vacuum the floor. To do so, she unplugs the computer so she can plug in the vacuum cleaner instead. This causes Willie not to die when the time comes and God's plane to start losing altitude, threatening to crash on the beach. But at that moment, the wife finishes cleaning and connects the computer again, which reinitializes. The wife sees a message on the screen asking for a password and writes 18, so then the computer welcomes her as the goddess. God's plane suddenly regains altitude and everyone loses the text message with their life countdown right before the world begins going through serious changes goddess uses the computer to make a nicer, more beautiful reality, where the sky is filled with flowers. People can walk on the bottom of the ocean, gravity is flexible and the ice caps stop melting. Regardless of global warming, now the TV only shows good news every day. Martine has a baby with the gorilla, Victor becomes a renowned author by publishing the brand new testament, EA and Willie have their first kiss together, and Franzos gets pregnant with Orly's baby. Meanwhile, God is stuck in an Uzbek factory, where he checks every washing machine, hoping for a way out. Thanks for watching, please subscribe for more videos.